Hi everyone, it's Anna Haferman, and today I want to show how to make punch cards uh, for your punch card knitting machine using the Cricut. Now, um, I have made several of these. Uh, I've got some 24 stitch ones, some MK70 ones, and these are uh, cut on just notebook divider, which is um, these little plastic index dividers. I got these at Target. They have them at all over the place, Walmart, Dollar Tree. They're inexpensive. And um, I made some on uh, this one I cut on that and then I had the Cricut number it and label it. Today I'm just going to do a basic overview of how to cut it and then in a future video I'll go into uh, how to draw the numbers using the Cricut. Now this one is actually just made with cardstock and that works just fine. Uh, it's not going to last forever but if you treat it well and just don't crease it. It probably lasts quite a while. So regular cardstock will work. This is just vellum paper. It works. It's maybe a little thin. This is uh, the notebook divider. This one is stencil um, material and that's available on Amazon. It's a little sturdier, which you don't necessarily need. The good thing about it is that it's longer, so you can get a longer card. So there's different things you can use. I personally think the Target notebook paper, uh, notebook dividers was my favorite. So um, what do we do? So first of all, we need to find a pattern and you know, you can create your own pattern or look in one of the books. These are all available. This one and a lot of the other punch card books are available online. And basically it shows you the patterns and then shows you what to punch. So for this one, and you could punch any card on this, like a tuck stitch or, um, or slip or fair isle, any card that you want. So for this one, I'm going to use this number 464. Uh, what we need to do is create a text file in the computer and uh, then it, and then transfer it to the Cricut software and so we can cut it. So first we need to create the pattern. So right here I can see that this is a eight stitch by 14 row repeat. So these numbers here, the this one is the stitches across and this one is the stitches high. So it's even though it's a 24 stitch card, it's an eight stitch repeat and that one's an eight stitch repeat. I actually think everything on this page is, but some of them uh, are not in the book. So this one's a 24 stitch. In this case, you would have to, it's 24 by 56, so you'd have to copy the whole thing. So in this one though, we're just gonna do the eight by 14. So that means I'm just gonna isolate that so I can copy it easily. Oops. And then, so that's what I need to copy. I don't need to copy those two bottom rows. That's just a, for the overlap. So that's what I'm copying. So I will put that into a text file using dashes for the blank spaces and X's for the whole. So I'm going to go to text edit, which is a Mac program and click new document. And then I will copy the repeat using dashes for the um, spaces and then X's, which would be the punched holes. And I'll copy that card from the top, that little repeat from the top, 
and just enter it in using the dashes and X's and um, till I get the whole thing copied. So now that I have it copied, I just look and make sure it's correct. And then I want to save this file and click save. And then basically I need a file that ends in TXT. So just make sure that you, whatever you're using, you saving it as a TXT file. And then you can call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it brother 464 because that's the number in the book and then save it. And so now that I've got my little file, now I go to the my browser and I go to brendaabell.com and I'll put that um, link in the description. So uh, this is her site and um, she's got several different things on her blog, some recipes and things like that that are really cool, but also has these knitting tools. So go here and click knitting tools. And the punch card generator says generate SVG files, which is what the Cricut uses, from text files, which is what we just made, for cutting punch cards on a die cutter, which is a Cricut. So then we'll launch that. And then here's the punch card generator. And she explains how to do it, so you can read through that again. Um, it Basically, it says that you make the text file and it'll generate an, X, an SVG. So we'll start by going down here. So select file to upload, and we're going to browse and find the one we just made, which was that brother 464, which on mine just opens at the top, but yours may be a little different. Open that. And then it says select machine type, and that's your knitting machine type. And I am going to be using, a, I'm making a 24 stitch punch card, which is what I copied from the book. Basically, I did an eight stitch repeat, so that needs to divide evenly into 24. It wouldn't have worked for an 18 or a 12 or 30, but there are different cards and books and things for those. So I'm making the 24 stitch. Uh, this says 4.5 millimeter, but it also is Brother 260 would work too, which is a nine millimeter. Uh, this one would be your SK155 and your MK70. That's a fine gauge, the pass up and the jack 40s and all that, but we're doing 24 stitch. And then vertical repeats, and I can see on the card that it's three. Uh, basically, you need to have your card needs to be at least 40 rows because it needs to be long enough to go around the punch card mechanism and snap together. So this one is, uh, I think, 42 rows, so that'll work. And I can see very obviously the three repeats on that card. So then all this, we just leave all that alone and then just click Upload. And then on mine, it pops right open. Uh, yours may be in your download folder. You may have to find it. It should be the top one. So click that, and there is the SVG file uh, with the pattern, and you can see the outline of it. So then... Um, I'm going to just copy the name of it. I'm doing Command C just so if I have to search for it, I've got it in the clipboard. So then the next thing is we go down here to Cricut Design Space and open that. And uh, Cricut Design Space is a um, program that is free to use and uh, it comes with Cricut, but it's web-based and anyone can download it and use it. So if you don't have a Cricut yet, you would be able to go in there and play around with it if you wanted to. So I'm clicking new project here. And then I'm going here. This opens up on the canvas and this is basically your workspace for Cricut. So then I need to go over here and click upload. And, um, here are some 
that I've already uploaded, but we're doing this, this one. So I'm going to go upload image, click that, and then go here and click browse. And on mine, it shows up right in the top, but if you had to search for it, you could, you have it in the clipboard, so you could just paste it in your search. And there it is. And open it. And then here it is. It's not uploaded yet, but it's just showing you a preview of it. And it says cut image here, which is a little misleading because we're not cutting it yet. Um, anyway, so go over here to upload in the corner. And there it is. Now it's uploaded. So select that. And you see it's green around the edge, the one I've selected. And then go over here to the corner and click Add to Canvas. So there it is. And um, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller so I can see the whole thing in the window at the same time. So there it is. Uh, now it's not quite ready to cut because if we cut it now, what would happen? I'll show you if I click make it, what it does is it would click, it would create the outline of the card and then all the little holes out of the same, it doesn't, because we haven't told it yet that we want, um, didn't want to do that. So I ha we haven't told it yet that we want the holes to be cut out of the outline. So we'll just cancel that. And so, so there it is. So what I need to do is just select it and then click attach. And if then, if we click make it, there it is. Um, so you can see this is your Cricut mat and then there is the, uh, there's the punch card ready to cut. So I've got one of my index dividers out and I'm going to I want to get rid of this little tab so it doesn't get in the way of the cutting device. And I'll just cut it off as straight as I can. I'll take the mat. This is the Cricut mat and this is uh, I use the generic ones and they work well. And then I'm just going to line it up in the corner of the mat and I want to push it down. I want to make sure it's stuck on there pretty well. I'm just taking this Cricut spatula thing and making sure it's flat so that when it cuts it stays it's not going to move around or buckle or anything like that. So that's all I'm going to do. So here's the Cricut, and uh, the first thing I want to do is open it. So I'll push this button and it opens. And then I'll turn it on with this button here. Now I have the Cricut Explore Air 2, which will work just fine for this. Uh, the Cricut Maker will work. The Cricut Joy is too small to cut a punch card. It's not wide enough. It doesn't cut things that are wide enough. All right, so there's the mat and I want to stick it into the machine so it's under these two little things and then press this um, arrow button and as you can see it took it into the machine so it um, so that it was so it's kind of stuck in there so it's not going to move now now i'll go over to the laptop so let's see so here the laptop will show me uh the 
the laptop's going to say um, first of all it says material type and then it'll say material size this is eight and a half by eleven and so I'll just put that in there and so then it will make sure that what I'm cutting is not too big for the material I'm cutting so you see how it goes to 11 uh, goes to 11 and then I click continue and it says to connect but I'm actually connecting via um, Bluetooth so it just takes a second and there it is so it says set base material but it's just taking a second so I'm using cardstock which is a setting on the on the Cricut it's telling me to press go and then it's going to start to cut And you see here on the laptop, it's showing the progress. It's 3%. This is probably going to take uh, at least 10 minutes to cut. But you don't have to stand there and babysit it. So it takes a little bit of time, but it's um, it does it on its own. So if I zoom in a little, you see what it's doing. So it's cutting all those little circles. I'm not sure if we can see that on the video at this point. But it'll just cut all the little circles and then the last thing it'll do is cut the outline. And while it's cutting, I wanna thank everyone who donated to the YouTube thanks and to the Buy Me A Coffee. The, your donations really do help me to make more videos and I appreciate it. I'd also like to thank everyone who helped me learn how to cut the punch cards with the Cricut, including Brenda Bell who made the punch card generator and several people on Facebook. Uh, a lady named Sue from Australia, another lady named Susan who's also from Australia, and then several other people. So I... It, I wouldn't have been able to do it without your help, so I appreciate that. Thank you so much. So we're getting to the end. The laptop says 98%, so we're almost there. And like I said, you do not have to stand here and watch it. And even if it finishes and you're not there, it'll just wait for you. So now it's doing the uh, outline of the card. it right out there and so I can look at it and see that it's cut and then I just push this button and it'll sort of uh, push it out let's see how I can show you that let's go back here all right so then just push that and that's it so there it is on the mat so, we'll, and so you can see I'm pulling that off there's the outline and then you just pull the, the card out and there, there it is and you may have a couple little stragglers that don't come out totally but you just pull those out on with your finger or tools then there's the card and now you just have to clean off that mat and this is something you really don't want to do near your laptop or your knitting machine but you just do this and get all of those off and this big scraper definitely helps for that 
and a lint brush is important too. So you see they jump way over there. You just want to get them off like that. So that's your card. Um, you can draw your numbers in with a Sharpie or uh, like a fine point Sharpie. In the next video, I'll show how to uh, draw the numbers on, which is really cool. I draw them with the Cricut.